Okay, let's try to get one more video out today. Has it been, what, nine, ten months since the last ones? I wanted to quickly address today a common fallacy pitfall. Well, not necessarily a fallacy, but it's a pitfall. If you don't time it right with regards to oral posture habits and the management of TMD or temporomandibular joint dysfunction. I'm not necessarily aiming here to downplay the importance of tongue posture, which is the topic today. It's more to talk about the, the timing where this is appropriate and the timing where it is not. I have a lot of respect, for example, for the Mew family, Anthony Sims, and other experts who are great proponents of appropriate tongue posture. What I am not personally a big proponent of is the claim and the notion that tongue posture is an important aspect of TMJD treatment. I believe this is not true. I do agree that it's extremely important for the development of the face and the teeth during development. And you could argue it's more controversial, you could argue it's importance for normal adults as well. What I have found personally, I used to, I, th I don't even remember, I, at least my TMD article on my website, it used to state the importance of tongue posture in, in TMD treatment. And I was, I was really forced to moderate myself on this statement because I found that for a lot of patients it would make them worse. Tongue pa posture, working on appropriate tongue posture would make the patient worse. Now here's why. If you read my work on TMD or seen some of my other videos on this topic, you've seen that there are two main contributors to TMD. One of the most important aspects is the compression of the joint itself where the, T, where the mandibular condyle is resting, well, it's really sitting and being pushed too far back and up into the, into the joint. This will gradually deteriorate, this will put pressure on the joint, obviously, it will gradually deteriorate the disc, it can cause disc injury and joint injury, all right? The other main aspect of TMD management, although it's not the joint per se, is dysfunction and the potential for severe inflammation of the lateral pterygoid muscles that also have implications for jaw, cheek pain, and facial pain through some of the fascicles of the trigeminal nerve that passes through it and adjacent to it. Now here's the problem, here comes the point. For a, pa normal, for a normal patient with normal function of the jaw muscles, you could even make the argument a normal patient who does not have any pain, but especially a normal patient, a truly normal patient with no significant issues with especially the lateral pterygoid muscles. If such a patient was to implement appropriate tongue posture, they would accommodate that tongue to the roof of, roof of, roof, not roof, roof of the mouth. Because as that tongue drives slightly up and forward, they would accommodate that by pushing the lower jaw ever so slightly forward. They would co-engage the pterygoids because if you don't, it pushes the jaw back. You see, the, the tongue is attached to the hyoid. The hyoid is attached to the chin. So if you have no, you have zero lateral pterygoid function, and, you, and there might already be some compression of the joint, and you put that tongue up and forward to the roof of your mouth so it can support the development of the face and all that stuff, the problem there is that it will suddenly push the jaw backwards. And as you push that jaw backwards, because there's no reflective, reflexive co-engagement of the pterygoid, it will end up pushing the jaw even further back and exacerbate the problem. So, I don't recommend it for that reason. I do recommend it for, for especially for children and, and adolescents, anyone in, in development, I do to some extent, also, I, I question its efficacy, but I do also recommend it to some extent for adults. 
but I do not recommend it for active TMJ sufferers until they have resolved the TMJ issue and especially greatly improved the pterygoid function because once you can put your jaw, your, your tongue to the proper position and get reflexive co-engagement of the lateral pterygoids, you will no longer have that consequent increased compression of the joint itself. And the other issue is you could say, well, what if you do both at once? Well, here's the thing. Some patients, they put the jaw forward, they're able to do that from the get-go, no problems. Other patients, especially the more aggressive TMJ sufferers, they put the jaw forward and they will get pterygoidal inflammation almost right away. And if you then add up, like from doing almost nothing, from just having your jaw slightly forward, even with no weight, additional weight on it. If you, on top of that, push your jaw up and forward gently, I'm not going to get into the proper and improper aspects of tongue, tongue posture here, but the fact of the matter is, be it right or wrong, most people will attempt to push the jaw, the, the tongue and not the jaw, slightly up and forward, all right? That will make them worse because it leads to the jaw being pushed slightly even further back. So, for a patient who is able to, for a TMJ patient, who is able to keep the jaw slightly forward, engage the pterygoids, not get any inflammation, and they're also able to keep the tongue in the proper position, all right, they will be fine. I don't think it's going to make the TMJ problem better. I think that tongue posture doesn't really have it might have to do with predisposition because it will, if it happens during development, it will give you a proclivity to that short maxilla. All right. But the tongue posture in and by itself, I'm not so sure if that's an important part of TMJ rehabilitation unless you already have good pterygoidal function. If you have good re, uh, t pterygoidal function, you probably wouldn't have a TMD problem in the first place. But if you do have good pterygoidal function and you put your tongue in the proper position, that might help you to get that jaw slightly, slightly forward and decompress that joint. But if you have zero pterygoidal function, at least innate pre-existing function, and you put that tongue up and forward, that will draw the jaw back because you don't have that reflexive engagement of the pterygoid. I hope I'm making myself clear here. It's a little bit complicated. I will put some pictures up in the, in the video. So, after we resolve the TMD problem and after we resolve the, the pterygoidal, the severe pterygoidal insufficiency, now you can be happy to start practicing the appropriate tongue posture, but I don't recommend it during active TMJ develop, uh, re rehabilitation, rehabilitation, especially for patients who have pterygoidal problems. And most TMJ sufferers do have pterygoidal problems. Some have them very mild, some have moderate, and some have them severe. If you do this, if you start doing aggressive tongue posture changes to a severe TMJ patient, they will most likely get much worse. At least that's been my experience. Like I said, I used to have this on my website myself, but I had to remove it because I saw that patients were getting worse. Why were they getting worse? One, because it pushes the jaw back. Two, because the pterygoids are beyond useless. So we need to fix that first and then we can work on the tongue posture, guys. I hope that makes sense. I feel that like this was a little bit of a ramble, but uh, let's see what it turns out to. Um, if you have any questions, you'll leave them down below, all right? And I hope that you will all have a great weekend.